Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. Today we're going to talk about possible reasons your chook can't use her legs. Merrick's disease is common, but it's not always going to be due to Merrick's, and considering Merrick's disease is a death sentence, it's always worth understanding the other causes so you can rule those out and protect the rest of your flock. I'll see you in a sec. Hi all, thanks for checking in. Today's topic is a somewhat dense one. There are a few causes of leg weakness or leg paralysis, all of which can be confused with Merrick. So make sure you've got a pen and paper, something you can jot notes down, for things that you can rule in or out. Before you head off after the video, please don't forget to thumbs up and comment to let me know you found it useful. Subscribe if you wanna stay in the loop with more educational episodes and tidbits. Right, here we go. Let's kick it off with Merrick's. Merrick's disease is a virus. It is incredibly common across backyard flocks and it's considered pretty ubiquitous. We consider it to be in every flock, but a lot of chooks will carry it and never show any signs. They become infected from feather dander, from mum or other birds in the first few days of life when they're huddling together or underneath mum's wings, and it can rear its head at any stage. Later on in life, it can cause lymphoma of pretty much any organ, but when they're young, we see it as leg paralysis. So this leg paralysis form is usually seen between six weeks and six months old. Younger than six weeks, not really a thing because it takes that long to take effect. Up to a year is possible, but if it's over six months old, you just want to be considering other things. Generally, you see weakness and then paralysis of one leg at a time. So in the early stages, it just looks like limping and then the wings become paralyzed, eventually the head becomes paralyzed, neck goes back and they starve to death. They are alert, happy, eating, not generally any pain, right up to the point of starvation. So it's horrible to watch because they look like they have such a will to live, but it is a cancer of the sciatic nerves that run down to the legs. It's almost certainly not going to come right and they should be euthanized on humane grounds. If you look closely, sometimes you might see gray fuzzy irises in the eye, one pupil more dilated than the other, um, lumps at the base of the feather follicles, or sometimes the crop not working properly as well if the nerves to that have been affected. So look them over, look for those other signs as well, it might help you rule it in or out. So it's not good news if they have Merex, but there are other things it could be. Have a listen and see if any of these resonate with you. Remember, please, I am not advocating for leaving a paralyzed bird on the ground, even if you're nursing it inside. Unable to stand for a prolonged period of time and the hopes that she will come right is not okay. She probably will not, and that's not okay for her welfare. But as you'll see, a lot of these other causes are actually flock-wide issues. So even if she's euthanized, you'll want to address these for the sake of the others. If she's euthanized, I highly recommend to have the vet take some blood and send her off for a post-mortem autopsy to get to the bottom of it. Otherwise, let's run down the other possible causes of odd gait and leg weakness. I'm gonna leave out the obvious causes of limping like scaly leg mite, bumble foot, and infected swollen joints, okay? We're focusing on weak, paralyzed legs today. So, here we go, I'm gonna just hit them up, boom, boom, boom. Botulism, bacterial infection, but it happens very fast. Weak, flaccid paralysis of the whole body. Head sitting on the ground, wings paralyzed. In the early cases, they may resolve with treatment, which does not necessarily include antibiotics, but more supportive care. If she's too far gone, she'll need to be euthanized for sure because it kills by paralyzing their lungs, so they suffocate. Check the others for signs of weakness. Get your vet ASAP if you notice any similar signs in the others. Kinky back. This is seen in your fast growing meat breeds. Genetic, because it's due to very fast growth. It's a deformity to the vertebrae in the middle of the back, pinching her spinal cord and paralyzing her back calf. So not just the legs, but the back calf of the body. She'll be sitting on the ground, often with her two legs out in front. Nothing you can do, euthanize. Epidemic tremors. This is in your little lees, usually under six week old chicks. It's a virus that affects the brain. They're weak, they can't walk properly, and eventually they're fully paralyzed. You'll probably see multiple affected, up to or even more than 50%. The telltale sign is tremoring muscles, hence the name. Flip them on their back and watch them try to right themselves. This is when you'll often see the tremoring really flare up. 
They pass it to each other and the mums will also pass it down in their eggs so it can be seen as a big outbreak. Right, next up, let's hit nutritional deficiencies. Thiamine or B1 deficiency. We see brain malfunction. A lack of thiamine prevents the brain from being able to use blood sugar for energy. So, apparent blindness, stargazing, looking up at the ceiling, telling us they have a raging headache. You might see tremoring of the head. Eventually, the muscles at the front of the neck paralyze and the head flips back. Any bird with brain signs at any age, I am giving an injection of vitamin B1 to watch for a response because improvement should be rapid if this is the cause. You can inject B vitamins. You can also get supplements that you add to the water. Address their diet. What's going wrong? Nutritional myopathy. This is a vitamin E selenium deficiency. When they don't get enough, we see three syndromes. Weak muscles, called white muscle disease. Lying down, weak legs, weak heart muscle. Two, brain dysfunction. We call this crazy chick disease. Stretched out, spasming of the legs and wings. Neck twisted around, falling over backwards. Three, leaking of the blood vessels under the skin. So look underneath where gravity would pull fluid. So over the chest, the legs, we're looking for a bubbly gel type fluid under the skin or a green pigment. Breeding hens have significantly higher requirements of vitamin E selenium to pass down to her chicks, as do the growing chicks themselves. Are they on the right diet for the correct life stage? If in doubt, supplement the whole flock with a vitamin, mineral supportive supplement through the water when breeding. Slipped tendons. The fancy word for this is porosis. We usually see it in our chicks soon after hatching, if not at hatching. It's where the Achilles tendon is too loose for the groove that it's supposed to sit in, and it flips out of its groove and around to the outside of the leg, pulling it around on a weird angle, so the toes rotate outwards. Sometimes replacing the tendon into its groove and splinting can work. Splinting while it's out in the wrong place will not work. Surgery can be attempted to suture that tendon back in place and hold it there, but if you leave it for a while and the bird's a little bit older when it goes to get help, adhesions will have formed, any chance of success becomes minimal in my experience. This is a very painful condition. They need real help, they need pain relief. Main take home, it's thought to be a nutritional deficiency. We're not sure exactly which one, but make sure that your breeding flock and your growing hens are on the right diet. Take home a broad spectrum supplement. And lastly for nutritional is vitamin B2 or riboflavin deficiency. This affects many parts of the body, but especially the nerves, mostly in your growing chicks. Chicks will show the classic sign of sitting back on their hocks with curled toes, right? Curled around. The sciatic nerve to the leg is dying away. That's why we get that. Get there quickly and they can respond really quickly to supplementation. If they have a poor diet, lacking many vitamins, then riboflavin is usually the first to be seen. So make sure if you're gonna supplement, if you see this, supplement with a really broad spectrum, good vitamin mineral supplement. Whew, next, right, let's leave nutrition behind and move on to trauma. Breaks, always a possibility. You need an x-ray to rule those out. Osteoporosis or layer fatigue. If you have X layers from the commercial industry, fresh from the cages, these guys are at high risk. Their bones will be exhausted. They have lived in the dark with no vitamin D from the sun, which is needed for calcium metabolism, and they've not been able to move and exercise, so their bones are weak until they've had time to recover. Broken bones from simple handling is common. Deformed breast bones, broken toes and legs, fractured backs causing paralysis, all right? Testing calcium on blood won't tell you anything because if they're laying, calcium's gonna be normal anyway. They need an X-ray to diagnose any fractures. Make sure they've got a good palleted layer diet, not a layer mix where they can pick and choose, but a pallet. Broken bones are not cool. They need a vet, they need pain relief. There are certainly things you can do to prevent it when you first rescue. Check out this episode to find out more about that. Rickets, another cause of brittle bones. Deformed bones and breaks. This is seen in your young growing hens due to a lack of vitamin D from the sun. If you're wearing these guys inside and they don't see the sun, consider this as a possibility. You can see signs of it on post-mortem autopsy to support the diagnosis. And lastly for trauma is something big and hard pressing on the nerves to the legs from the inside, inside her abdomen. 
also obturator nerve paralysis can be seen if there's a large egg that's been sitting in there for a while. Egg binding is more of a small bird, caged bird, or at least bantam thing, but it is possible in any size, and they can be bound for a number of reasons as well. If it's just in the early stages, pins and needles, she may bounce back after a couple of hours. If she's suffered real prolonged nerve damage, it can take weeks if recovery occurs at all. So euthanasia is warranted in that case on the grounds of welfare if she doesn't bounce back relatively quickly. And finally, toxicities, heavy metal toxicity. In coordination and often gastrointestinal signs as well, diarrhea or constipation, they sit back on their hocks and are off balance. In caged birds, we x-ray to see if they've eaten something metallic, but in poultry, in my experience, it's more likely to be from contaminated water or soil, in which case you're not gonna see something on x-ray. You need to run blood work through your vet. Obviously, things like lead have health implications for the rest of the flock as well, as well as your family if you're eating those eggs. So get to the bottom of it, you don't wanna miss that one. They need medical therapy to bind those metals and flush it out if they're gonna come right. And last but not least, there are many toxic plants that can affect the brain and nerves. Caraca berries, sweet pea, toxic algae, and nightshade to name a few. Know what you've got in the enclosure. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. I need a coffee. <laughs> if in doubt and she's being euthanized, push your vet to send it for an autopsy. If your vet is not super comfortable with birds, at least get them to take bloods and send the body for an autopsy. Let the pathologists at the lab tell you what's likely going on. In the meantime, take a close look at the diet and supplement through the water. Give everyone a booster. Okay, good luck guys. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up if you found that useful. I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye.